joke actually and this is kind of sad news actually um Lud ludovic de saint sorry Ludovic de Serin, Ludovic de Saint Serin, who recently was appointed as the head over there at Andalusia, has been outed after one season. So not only has Ruigi Villasenor lost his job over at Bali after only two years, now Ludovic de Saint Serin has now lost his position over there at Andalusia. And I, for one, am kind of upset and pissed off for him. I'm not going to lie. One season is not long enough. I feel like his vision for Andalusia Musta was probably the best we've seen in recent years, ever since Andalusia Musta left her namesake label, what, I don't know, 2013, 2012, it's been a long time. I think Andy has been a bit wayward, it's kind of lost his way. And in that time, because fashion keeps moving, many other labels have come up and kind of filled that void. So maybe the need and the allure around the Musta isn't what it once was. And if you just look online, if you see loads of these fashion girlies on fashion Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and whatnot, and the guys and girls, most of them who are fans of Andy Musta are all purchasing archive stuff when Andy Musta was still at a namesake label. So clearly, the things they've been doing since 2012 2013 haven't been hitting with the customers that they would want to hit with and the customers that they did have have now moved on to other things so i thought what ludovic what ludovic the sensor did there for his first season i thought was pretty good effort and it kind of did show a lot of potential into kind of his overall vision in terms of taking the brand back or the, the house back to where it kind of should be and restoring it to former glories i thought there's a lot of real good sensuality a lot of good sleekness aggressiveness with a, some nice hints of real nice quality tailoring across the label i thought it looked really really good for a, for a debut collection i thought he did an amazingly good job but out of the blue after one season one season there at the helm he's completely gone even though i think one of the looks if i'm not mistaken was worn by um, somebody famous i think on red carpet i forgot which one it was but in general i really did think he'd have an opportunity to kind of grow into the role and kind of you know along the way kind of retell his and delimiter story especially when you think of how closely aligned it was with his own brand so let's actually read the, the story here itself curse your evoke it says Ludov Ludovic de Saint-Serin is exiting Andy de Musta a little over two months after showing his debut for 2023 collection for the label in Paris. It was reported today neither, Andy Le, uh, neither de Saint-Serin nor Claudio Antonelli who brought Andy de Musta label in 2020 and is close with Andy de Musta, the woman, released a statement. So no one has said anything. So most likely... This is a firing in the same way that, you know, Ruigi Villasenoria, you know, they, they made it seem like it was a parting of ways, but most likely it was a firing or a difference of opinion. And they agreed to disagree in part ways. The news comes days after the announcement of Ruigi Villasenor would be exiting Bali, although Villasenor had two seasons to put his own spin on the Swiss label. Previously, Andy Lemusta's label was run by a creative design team, the Sensorin debut collection, which hewed closely to the gender fluid approach to dressing he worked with at his own brand quickly made a splash among the internet's favorite it girls most notable was actress hunter schaefer who wore the show's opening look a long bias cut white silk shirt in a singular extra feather delicately covered the breast at the vanity of oxford parties it's my first way it's my way of saying that after this first step i'll be spreading my wings and i'll be able to express myself and the really sad thing about it is that if i'm not mistaken um claudia antonelli who brought the label was actually a close friend or kind of vetoed and kind of pushed for Ludovic de saint -Serine to actually get the job in the first place. If you check the review of the collection here from 2023 Fall Collection, you will see here a section where they speak about the relationship that Ludovic de saint had with Claudio and the things that he was doing there. So it kind of seems a little bit strange that this would happen so quickly. Um, so let's continue here. This is where it says it in the review. It says it's worth noting though, that De Sensorin has the house founder's blessing. De La Musta is friends with the label's new owner, Claudio Antonelli, and she and De Sensorin met up when he got the gig. She gave me the best advice, which was to work hard and do the best that you can do. So clearly there was a lot of goodwill behind the appointment. He was kind of really going balls deep into it. He was go going through the archive. He was kind of pulling reference pieces and really trying to make his mark on there, but also being respectful of the house codes and whatnot and trying to make that a thing. And the reason why this is a bit of a bummer is that unless this is like punishment for bad behavior, which could be the case, there does seem to be a precedent being set ever since the whole Demnem 
Balenciaga thing that a lot of these houses and conglomerates in general are essentially being a little bit shy of the bad press that comes around hiring a hype blockbuster um, designer to take over a house because of the negative press that can happen from them being mavericks and for them being a little bit crazy but me as a kind of you know as a creative at heart what I would have to say is that part of the reason why you hire these people is because the the mix of the crazy is able then to kind of translate into the work itself part of the beauty of hiring somebody that probably skirts and kind of pushes the line is that sometimes that skirting and pushing of the line can translate into actually qual creating quality creating amazing you know genre defying um industry moving shaking type of work that goes on to influence um you know generations to come and kind of change the entire conversations around clothes in any given season and i just feel like with young designers now you know the industry kind of getting them on board hyping them up which would happen to ludovic the sensei in and i don't think the entire time even if like let's understand or let's kind of believe the narrative out there that maybe he was um not the best behaved person behind the scenes maybe a pain in the ass maybe he's drinking maybe it's drugs maybe it's too much partying if that's the case this was probably something that's been happening for a while so most likely the same time he was being hyped as the next big thing no one really at one point pulled him to one side they would just kind of let him do what he wanted because at the time he was the next big thing he then gets the next big job still no one checks his behavior and then when he starts acting out people start acting surprised and they don't want it even though they kind of hired him in part due to the fact that he was this kind of maverick cool guy cool kid um you know who had you know the it girls in the palm of his hand and was kind of somebody that everybody's name kind of had on the flipping you know the end of their lips and whatever it may be so i'm a little bit sad from in that regard but it is a little bit of also a bit of a reminder that maybe the idea that these young designers need to go and take over a big established house in order to kind of have some sort of you know acceptance in the industry to validate what they need is maybe not very necessary as it once was in the past maybe now it is maybe more beneficial for houses to maybe look internally and maybe promote people who have already been working at the company for a very long time because they understand how to work within certain constraints or to work under certain levels of you know authority or whatever it may be and maybe if there's somebody that has your own brand going from doing everything yourself to suddenly having a million bosses that may be something to be dealt there but I think in general, I would hope that this should be a warning and a kind of um, a cautionary tale to a lot of young designers out there that don't be so quick to jump on these jobs. Um, maybe just do your own thing for a little while yet and don't think the grass is always green on the other side because when it goes wrong, it can really sometimes set you back a little bit. It can maybe kind of, you know, dampen your confidence. It can maybe sully your name in the industry and it can sometimes create unnecessary rumors, like even the stuff that I'm talking about. It could be nothing to do with his lifestyle. It could be just purely a professional, um, you know, conflict, you know, happening and maybe difference of opinion. And that's it. But because of the way the fashion works, because no one actually wants to say Wagwan, people are going to try and fill in the gaps and try and make up what actually happened. And that's going to lead to more conversations, more, you know, nonsense being put out there. And it's going to make you look crazy. But regardless, um, I don't think he deserved to leave or decide to get ousted after one season. He had a bit more in his tank. I feel like he could kind of put out there if maybe. But what do I know? What do I know?